Open your Bibles with me to Philippians chapter 2 as you're being seated. I want to thank Kobe, our student minister, for doing a great job preaching last Sunday. I know, yes, yes, give a hand. I know uh, that you were blessed by God through his sermon. I'm excited to study God's word with you this morning. Let's do a quick review of where we have been so we will be ready to receive all that God has prepared for us this morning. Uh, Paul commanded the saints in Philippi and us in verse 5 to adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus. Paul told us about the attitude of Jesus in his brilliant description of the incarnation of Jesus. Paul shared that Jesus descended from heaven, he came to earth, he took on flesh, and he rescued us from our bondage to sin by his perfect life, death, burial, and resurrection. As Paul said, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We are right with God by faith in Christ Jesus. God exalted Jesus and he gave Jesus the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord is the name of authority, of honor, of power, of majesty, of sovereignty. Jesus is Lord of all and Lord over all. Therefore, we know in that passage, verses 5 through 11, the attitude of Jesus, his humility, obedience, sacrifice, and service is to be in us and is to be seen through us and our relationships. Paul then continued in verse 12. And as you look at verse 12, chapter 2, he said, Therefore, my dear friends, just as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but even more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Paul commanded us to be like Jesus. Paul, here in verse 12, identified our part in becoming like Jesus. He identified our part in our spiritual growth process. Paul, notice, commended the saints in Philippi before he commanded the saints. He commended them before he commanded them. He encouraged them to keep on walking in obedience to God when he was with them, but even more when he was away from them. Paul was reminding them that God is with them always, that God sees them, knows them, and that God rewards them. Paul encouraged them to obey God even more. Paul then commanded the saints in Philippi. The command in verse 12 is to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Paul commanded these saints to work out spiritually, to put in the effort to become more like Jesus, to grow in their faith in Jesus, in their love for Jesus, in their obedience to Jesus. Paul let them know spiritual growth and maturity requires effort and patience and endurance. And so Paul was specific. He commanded them, work out your own salvation. Not anyone else's salvation, your own salvation. What Paul was challenging these believers to do, in essence, he was saying to them, grow in your faith in Jesus so you can help others grow in their faith in Jesus. Obey God so you can help others obey God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength so you can help others to love the Lord, their God, their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Walk in the Spirit so you can help others walk in the Spirit. Work out your own salvation. And he said, with fear and trembling. What that means is a daily walk of humility. It's out of reverence and awe for God. 
Fear and trembling means a reverence and awe, a humility before God, a desire, a sincere, genuine desire to please God, a desire to say no to sin and temptation, and to say yes to the Savior Jesus. Paul focused in verse 12 on our part. Our part. So we see Paul's encouragement and command in verse 12 is for us. It's for us today. Just as it was years ago for the saints in Philippi, it's for us today. We are to keep on walking in obedience to God day by day. We are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We are to work out spiritually. You and I, we are to put in the effort in our own lives. We're to put in the effort. We're to work out so that we can become more like Jesus, so that we can grow in our faith in Jesus, love for Jesus, and obedience to Jesus. Paul lets us know in verse 12, you have a part to play. He let these believers know, he's letting us know. God through Paul and the Holy Spirit this morning is letting us know, each of us, we have a part to play. When it comes to spiritual growth and maturity, ours, we have a part to play in this. And that is to work out spiritually, to put in the effort, to be disciplined in those spiritual disciplines that help to produce Christ-likeness in us. So we see in this amazing passage of Scripture Verse 12 is our part. Paul now shifts. Verse 13, Paul identified God's part. Verse 13 is God's part in our spiritual growth and maturity process. Verse 12 is our part. Verse 13 is God's part. So let's look at verse 13 this morning together. Paul wrote these words, for it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. I will submit to you right here, right now, at the very beginning of this time in this study, that this is a magnificent verse. This is an incredible verse. This verse is outrageous. This verse is an amazing verse of truth for you and for me. For it is God who is working in you and me, both to will and to work, according to his good purpose. Let's look at this verse together. Paul wrote four. Four connects verse 12 to verse 13. Four helps us answer a couple of questions. Why do we work out? The answer, because God is working in us. How do we work out spiritually? The answer, by God who is working in us. You see, verse 4, verse 13, that four connects verse 12 to verse 13. We work out because God is working in. Our spiritual birth, our salvation, was a supernatural gift of God's grace to us in Christ Jesus. Our spiritual growth, our sanctification, is a supernatural gift of God's grace to us in Christ Jesus. Verse 12 is focused on our responsibility in spiritual growth. Verse 13 is focused on God's sovereignty in spiritual growth. Verse 12 is our instruction. Verse 13 is our inspiration. Verse 12 is the what. Verse 13 is the how. We cannot fulfill verse 12 without verse 13. There is not even a verse 12 without verse 13. Paul said four. Now watch this. It gets better. For it is God. It is God. Say that with me out loud. It is God, the creator of the universe, the one who hung the sun and the moon and the stars in the sky, the one who said, let there be, and there was. 
the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the all-powerful, all-present, all-knowing God, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the great I am, our good, good Father, for it is God. God is the one working in us, not us. And God is the one who gets the credit for his work in us, not us. God is the one who knows us. God loves us. God sees us. God is with us. God is watching over us. This is what Paul is telling us. For it is God, as the psalmist said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. It is God, the maker of heaven and earth, the creator. This is who he's talking about. This is God. God is the one who was working in you and working in me. He says, for it is God who is working in you. God was working in Paul. God was working in the saints in Philippi. God is working in you and me today, right here and right now. Working here in verse 13 is the original word energeo. And it's in the present tense. What that means is God is activating, energizing, enabling, empowering, equipping, filling, and inspiring you and me every day in every way. He's working, energizing you and me. He is working in us so that we might be able to do all that he's calling us to do. God is working in us. Now, here's how it works. He's working in us by his Holy Spirit in us. God works in us by his Holy Spirit in us. When God saved us, he placed his Holy Spirit in us. Now, get this. The Holy Spirit, according to Scripture, is our counselor, our comforter, our convictor, our encourager, our guide, our teacher, Jesus told us in John 14 and verse 26, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of everything I said to you. So for it is God who is working in you. I love how one Bible scholar put it. He said it this way, the power that compels us comes from the Spirit who indwells us. The power that compels us comes from the Spirit who indwells us. The Holy Spirit lives within you and within me. This verse just keeps getting better and better and better the more we go through each word, each phrase, each turn of this verse. For it is God who is working in you and in me. For it is God who is working in you and me. And he says, both to will and to work. Both, in the original language, means this, both. Both means both. God gives us everything we need when it comes to spiritual growth and maturity. Both to will. Will means the desire. It means thoughtful choice. It means a mindset. To work, work means the power, the strength, the energy. Will and work is in the present tense. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work. God is continually, daily, faithfully, lovingly at work in you and me. God is giving us the desire and the power to believe him, to follow him, to obey him, to love him, to trust him, to serve him, to share him, and to please him day after day after day. Get this now. God is the one giving us the energy, the power, the desire, and the strength that we need to be who he wants us to be and to do what he wants us to do. God's doing that work in you and in me. Yes, we have a part to play, verse 12. But that part to play in verse 12 is dependent upon verse 13. God is the one who is at work in us, giving us the desire and the strength to be who he wants us to be and do what he wants us to do. This agrees and comes into line with what Paul has already taught us. In chapter 1, when Paul said, I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will what? 
carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but that's some incredible encouragement for you and me this morning. What does that mean? It means God is the one who is working in us, giving us the desire and power to fulfill his plan for us. And he's not going to give up on us. He's going to continue what he started in us as he saved us. He's going to continue making us more like Jesus until that point in time when he says, I'm bringing you home to spend eternity with Jesus. What an amazing passage. Now, it gets even better, for it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. According to means in agreement with. His good purpose means his God's good pleasure and will. His good purpose means God's good pleasure and will. So now Paul is letting us know God's work in us is good for us according to his good purpose. Where is God who is working in you? Both to will and to work according to his good purpose. God's work in us. God's work in you is good for you. God's work in me is good for me. God's work in us is to make us more like Jesus. God's work in us is to mature us in our faith in Jesus. We know and understand that that maturing process only happens when we grow through trials, tests, sufferings, and troubles. Those difficulties, those trials, those tests that you may be in the middle of right now, those trials and tests are not indications that God does not love you. They're not indications that God has given up on you. They're not indications that God doesn't care about you. They're not indications that God's not watching you. They're not indications that God's not with you. They're not indications that God's gotten bored with you. They're indications of God's love for you and his love for me because those are the very things that he uses to make us more like Jesus, to mature us in our faith in Jesus. And God's work in us is good for us, but watch what he said. What Paul said is God's work in us is pleasing to God. Now imagine that. The sovereign creator of all things is working in you and me, and as he's working in us, and he's moving us and making and molding and shaping us to be more like Jesus. He's strengthening our faith in him. He's given us the desire and the power to do what he's calling us to do. He's doing that, and as he does that, it's according to his good pleasure. It's pleasing to God. His work in us is pleasing to God. Listen, God's work in us is pleasing to us. God's work in us is pleasing to all those who are around us. That's why Paul said it's God's good purpose for you and me and everyone. And so we are reminded here in this verse of something that I think it's good to be reminded of because at times we, we get this backwards, I think, just a little bit. And it's this simple principle God does not bless and follow our plan for us. We are blessed as we follow God's plan for us. God does not bless and follow our plan. The prayer that Jesus taught us is not, God, may my will be done in heaven as I desire it. No, we are blessed as we follow God's plan for us. You see, the prayer is, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in my life, in my marriage, in my family, my friendships, my relationships, my church, your will, God, be done. Not mine. 
your will is best. And so we come and we see this verse. It's verse 13. It's magnificent. It's like a diamond that sparkles brightly among other certainly diamonds in the New Testament, in the scripture, in the passage around it. I mean, Philippians is just one diamond after another diamond after another diamond after another diamond. They just keep bigger and bigger and bigger. And so let's look at a few points. I want you to process with me. Let's process together. A few points about this scripture. Let's process biblically. Let's walk through the process of setting our mind on things above, not on earthly things. Let's process and look at a few points about this verse from a biblical perspective this morning. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. This verse, I believe, first and foremost, is humbling. It's humbling. God is at work in you and he's at work in me. My creator, my maker, my savior, my Lord, my king, my rock and my refuge, my stronghold in times of trouble, my strength when I am weak, my defender, my deliverer, my God is the one working in me. And God is working in you. I don't know about you, but that's humbling. That's humbling to know that it is God who is working in me day after day after day. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. This verse is not just humbling. This verse is comforting. This verse is comforting because what this verse reminds us is this. God knows me. God knows my past. God knows my present faults, my present hurts and bad habits and hang-ups. God knows when I am weak, and God knows where I am weak. God knows my thoughts, my struggles, my failures, my fears, my feelings, and my frustrations. And though God knows all of those things about me, he yet continues to do his good work in me. And he does the same in you and with you. He knows all that about us. And yet, he tells us, he continues day by day his good work in us. For it is God who is working in you, both to will and to work according to his good purpose. I believe this verse is humbling and, and comforting, but I also believe this verse is encouraging. This verse reminds us God is a God of forgiveness. God forgives us when we confess our sins to him. He's faithful and just, and he purifies and cleanses us of all of our unrighteousness. When God forgives us, he places our sin as far as the east is from the west. He doesn't remember them anymore. God's mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. My God is faithful to me when I am faithful to him, and my God is faithful when I am not faithful to him. You see, my God knows what's best for me. He wants what's best for me, and he always does what's best for me. God will never fail me. God will never forsake me. God will never forget me. God will never leave me alone. God will never give up on me, and God will never give up on his work and his plan for me. And the same is true for you. He's never going to give up. He knows it. And yet he continues working. And you and me, giving us the desire and the strength to do what he wants us to do and to be who he wants us to be, waiting on us to do our work out with him, surrendered to him. For it is God who is working in you, both to will and to work according to his good purpose. I believe this verse is humbling and comforting and encouraging, but I believe this verse is also motivating. This verse is motivated. This verse tells me God is at work in me right here, right now. God is at work in you right here, right now. You know what that tells me? God is at work in me right here, right now. That tells me my past doesn't define me. That tells me my past doesn't disqualify me. That tells me my past does not hinder me from what God has in store for me in the present. What that tells me is I am not who God wants me to be yet, but I am not who I used to be. Praise God, I am who I am by God's grace and power and strength alive and at work in and through me. 
You see, what this tells me is that God is the one who has rescued me from the domain of darkness, and he has transferred me into the kingdom of the son he loves. God has granted me forgiveness in Christ Jesus, redemption through his blood in accordance with the riches of his grace to me. God has blessed me with every spiritual blessing that is in Christ Jesus. God is the one who is at work in me right here, right now. And I don't know about you, but my God changes cowards into conquerors. My God changes persecutors into preachers. And my God changes victims into victors. And since my God is at work in me right here, right now, he's not going to give up on me. I know the best is yet to come for me. And the same is true for you. The same is true for you. This is our God. For it is God who is working in you to will and to work according to his good purpose. It's humbling. It's comforting. It's encouraging. It's motivating. I don't want us. Follow me. I don't want us to take the truth of God's word for granted. I don't want us to fail to properly respond to God's truth when it confronts us and it comes to us. Follow me. Stay with me. It's football season. And there's going to be a lot of us who will be responding passionately to the performance of our favorite players and teams today and for the next several months. Our favorite players and teams who, for the most part, we don't know personally. And this is okay. This is good. There's nothing at all wrong with it. There is nothing wrong with rejoicing and shouting in the success and over the success of our favorite players and teams. However, I would submit to you then it makes a whole lot more sense for us to respond passionately to the truth of God's word and to our Lord and Savior, the risen and exalted King Jesus, who we know personally. We know him personally. He has changed us and he is changing us in a day-by-day way, as we've just discussed. And so I think it's important for us to take these opportunities when they're presented every once in a while to respond properly and passionately to the truth of God's word that was breathed out by the sovereign King of kings and Lord of lords who is at work in us both to will and to work according to his good purpose. I believe it's important for us to do that. So I know this is going to be a little unusual, and I'm guessing this may be a little uncomfortable, maybe a lot. But I think it's appropriate. And I think this is what God desires. Because you see, there are certain verses in God's word that you just have to respond passionately to. You have to respond passionately because that's proper in light of the word of God. Verse 13 is a hallelujah verse. Verse 13 is a praise the Lord verse. Verse 13 is a go God go verse. Verse 13 is a verse that should cause us to stand and cheer loudly. Verse 13 is a verse that should cause us to clap and cheer. Verse 13 is a verse that should cause us to stand and raise our praise to God because he is the one who is working in you and me both to will and to work according to his good purpose. Verse 13 is one of these verses that we need to respond properly to. And if we're going to respond properly to it, I believe we need to respond passionately to it. And I believe there's a time and place, even in God's house, even in worship, when we can respond passionately to the word of God. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to share that verse one more time. 
And when I share that verse, it's time for us. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. You look at some of you already putting your Bibles to the side. Do not injure your partner. Do not injure your seatmate. But I believe that this is one of those verses that when we truly get it and understand it, we got to respond to it. And that response has got to be passionate. Because we know, we know that it is God working in us. And we know that the reason he's working in us is because of all that his son did for us. To bring us to this point that he's given us the desire and power to do what he's called us to do and be who he's calling us to be. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to share it, and then I'm going to encourage you, stand and shout and give God praise. A proper, passionate response to this verse. Okay, I'm fired up. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. Yes! Yes! Woo! Yes! Yes! Woo! Yes! Yes! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Woo! Go, God, go! Go, God, go! Go, God, go! Go, God, go! Woo! Man! Yes! Give your neighbor a high five and he can be seated. Woo! Man! Holy cow, that is good. Yes. Woo. Woo. Man. Man, I feel good. I'm going to go run a marathon now. <laughs> Woo. For it is God. Mm. Mm. Who is working. Mm. He's working in you and me. To will and to work. He's giving us everything we need according to his good purpose for us. So the question to you and me, it's a simple question and it's an even more simple answer. It's this, what is our application? What do we do with this? Well, here's what we do. The application is real simple. Join God in his work in you. Join him in his work in you. Listen, the fact that God's working in us is incredible, and we just responded properly and passionately to that. We have a part to play, which is even more awesome and incredible in God's work in us. Our part to play in God's work in us is to work out what God is working in us. God is working in us, energizing us to do what he calls us to do, to be he calls us to be. He's giving us the desire and power about his Holy Spirit in us. So it's real simple. We look in scripture, we think biblically, and we understand this now all comes together. We work out what God is working in. What does that mean? It means God has called us to obedience. God empowers us to obedience. Therefore, we work out each day as we walk in obedience to God. God has called us to faith in Jesus. God has empowers us to walk by faith in Jesus. We work out as we walk by faith in Jesus day by day. God has called us to walk by the Spirit. God empowers us to walk by the Spirit. We work out as we walk by the Spirit, not the flesh, day by day. God has called us to forgive. God empowers us to forgive. We work out as we forgive day by day. God has called us to encourage one another daily. God empowers us to encourage one another daily. We work out 
as we encourage one another daily, as long as it's called today, so that none of us is hardened by sin's deception. God has called us to love one another. God empowers us to love one another. Therefore, we work out spiritually as we love one another, as Christ has loved us. You see, God is working in, and therefore we are to work out what he's working in. We do that knowing that he gives us the desire and power to work out. What he's asking for us each day is to show up and to do the working out, to do the walking, to do the obeying in his strength and in his power with the desire he will give to you and me. He energizes us so that we can fulfill verse 12 because of what God is doing in verse 13. I love how Paul summarized it in Colossians chapter 1 and verses 28 and 29. Paul said, we proclaim him warning and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in in Christ. Now watch this. Paul said, I labor for this striving. Notice that. I labor for this striving with the strength of Christ that works powerfully in me. Paul said, I work out, I labor, I strive for Christ by the strength of Christ that works powerfully in me. You and I, we labor, we work out for Christ Jesus by the strength of Christ Jesus that is working so powerfully in us. See, we are to live God's way according to God's good purpose and plan for us in God's strength for God's glory. Let me ask you to bow in prayer. Our worship team is going to come and lead us in this time of response. And I want to encourage you, our prayer partners will be standing here at the front. Hey, let's work out. That's what I want to encourage you to do this morning. Let's work out. Let's join God in his work in us. What does that mean? That means just let's start working out. Listen, if God's calling you to encourage your brother or sister, go encourage your brother or sister. You don't even have to wait till we stand to start singing. You can get up and go now. God's calling you to pray for a brother or sister, go pray for that brother or sister. God's calling you uh, to bless a brother or sister, go bless that brother or sister. God's calling you uh, to uh, love on them, to give them a hug or handshake. Go do that. Go do that. Work out what God's working in. If he's giving you the desire to be a blessing to a brother or sister in Christ here, maybe maybe it's your husband, maybe it's your wife. If he's giving you the desire to be a blessing, he's giving you the power, we know this, because he's working in us, then let's do it. Let's work out. Let's go. Bring them to the altar and pray over them. Pray for them. Be a blessing to them. Encourage. Maybe it's just simply going and telling someone that, that you love them. You just give them a hug. Maybe that's it. Again, we know those trials and those sufferings and those challenges, those tribulations, those times where we're suffering, those aren't indications that God doesn't love us. They're actually indication that he does. And it's in those times where God asks us to to join him in his work. If we're in that time, then we got to trust him. He's doing his work in us. He may call us, though, to go to someone who is in one of those times, and we, we got to do that. We got to go. We got to bless. Maybe just go tell someone how much they mean to you. You never know. God's giving you the desire and the strength to do it. You have no idea the power that that will be received in the person. Most of us don't know what folks are going through, but I can tell you, in a word from the Lord, a blessing from the Lord, an encouragement from the Lord, that's what scripture says. It keeps us from being hardened by sin's deception. It keeps us from thinking that we're all alone. It keeps us to th- from thinking that we're not making a difference. God's working. God's moving. Listen, if, the, if you've yet to receive that gift of salvation that we've been talking about, then today's the day of salvation for you. Jesus took your place on the cross, paid your price for sin. He's done the work. All you need to do is receive that gift believe in Jesus, that he is your Savior. You believe that he died on the cross in your place, paid the price for your sin. He was buried and he rose again on the third day. And you simply respond to God's spirit working in your heart right now. 
and just ask God to forgive you of your sins. Turn from living your way and just say, God, I want to live your way from this point forward and receive Jesus in your life. You'll be changed from the inside out today, throughout all eternity. This is God's time for us. We're going to stand, we're going to sing this song about his love for us. And we know that. So let's rejoice, let's worship, but let's not only receive that love, but let's share that love as well. Let's stand and say yes to the Father.